is a big issue. When the A380 is still on the tarmac. This is Airbus headquarters in Toulouse in southwestern France. A nest for breeding the world's biggest birds. Whoa! This place is unbelievable. Everything in it is vast. The final assembly line is more than 1,600 feet long and 150 feet high. Apparently this building is, is so enormous that rumour has it, it can form its own clouds up near the ceiling. On this scale, human beings seem tiny and insignificant. The fully assembled A380 is by far the longest, widest and tallest airliner in history. And that's where the problem comes in. If there's an emergency, the passengers have a long way to go to escape and survive. This is an evacuation test of the A380. To satisfy international regulations, all 853 passengers must evacuate, using only half of the plane's 16 exits. They have just 90 seconds, the estimated survival time in the event of fire. To save their lives, passengers need an escape route fast. They're trapped at the height of a three-story building with nowhere to go. As a result, the A380 has the biggest evacuation slides in the world. But regulations require the slides inflate in just six seconds, so that the first passengers to arrive at the doors don't block the exits. The only way to do it is to make a surprising connection between a life-saving slide and a device that was designed to kill. To prove it, I'm going to build and test my own model of an evacuation slide. Even so, it would take nearly eight of these to make the same volume as an A380 slide. So maybe inflating it won't be too difficult. This is a very big bag, which basically is what an evacuation slide is. And when it comes to inflating a bag as quickly as possible, well, there is an obvious way to do it. It should be as simple as blowing up party balloons. Attach the bag to a cylinder of compressed gas and inflate for exactly six seconds as per regulations. Right, are we ready? Three, two, one. It is inflating. Five, six. Ah. The trouble is, it's nowhere near fast enough. After six seconds, the bag is still much too soft to take the weight of desperately fleeing passengers. So the A380's designers unleashed their secret weapon. Rocket power. The key to inflating evacuation slides for a super jumbo jet is rocket power. I'm using 19th century rockets because the primitive design makes it easy to see the key ingredient, gunpowder. These rockets weren't very accurate in their day. But they did create lots of gas, exactly what we need to fill the bag. All I have to do is make sure the rocket can't move. And here it is, one rocket fits onto this bed at the back, down this pipe leading to the bag. Obviously the rocket is facing this way because I want the exhaust gases going into the bag, not the actual rocket. So, fix it down. I need a light. This time I'm using the rocket gas as a booster and combining it with the compressed gas. But will that be enough to fill the bag in the critical six seconds? Nice job on the first half of the bag. Not so good on the second. For an evacuation slide, anything less than full inflation would cost lives. Well, the rocket gave us more speed, definitely, but we still didn't fill the bag. We need to get more air in. And to do that, the Airbus designers used one of these. 
It's called an aspirator, but it's basically just a funnel. As the funnel gets narrower, the rocket gas moving through it speeds up, causing the pressure to drop. That should create a vacuum effect, sucking in extra air from the surroundings to inflate the slide. But will it be enough to transform a weapon into a lifesaver? It's a stunning success, easily inflating in six seconds. Two-thirds of the gas filling the bag is fresh air, sucked in by the aspirator. And that's how you rescue people with rocket power. It works as a weapon of war, but turns out it can save lives. With this device, the A380's slides inflate in four seconds. Two whole seconds inside the required 853 passengers evacuated. Thanks to rocket-powered slides, the A380 was officially certified to fly. But the designers hope they'll never be used in a real emergency. Needless to say, if you're an engineer, it's better to ensure that an emergency never happens in the first place. On any given flight of the A380, one moment above all is fraught with danger. Touchdown. The earth-shattering collision of wheels and tarmac. Witness this notorious incident at Hong Kong's Kai Tak Airport in 1993. A Boeing 747 gets caught in a heavy crosswind while approaching the runway. As the jumbo jet twists in the wind, a single set of landing gear sustains the entire impact. But it's strong enough to survive. The A380's landing gear is rated to handle such extreme landings at four times the normal descent rate. But the colossal A380 is 40% heavier than a Boeing 747. And here's an amazing fact. The A380's landing gear is based on the same principle as the device that keeps your bicycle in perfect working order. Engineer Todd Todeschino plans to prove it with a bizarre experiment. This is his stand-in for the A380. A 440-pound piano. It's going to drop from a crane and land at 20 miles per hour. But Todd thinks he can give it a soft landing using exactly the same principle as the A380's landing gear. It comes from an old-fashioned but brilliant invention. You can make a shock absorber from a bicycle pump. If I make the hole smaller, the air can't get out so easy, and it's squashed or compressed, resisting my arm like that. It isn't pumping anything anymore, but it is absorbing the energy. The A380's massive shock absorbers may look like heavyweight, high-tech engineering. But Todd thinks each one is just a cylinder with a piston inside a giant bicycle pump. Right, big sheet of plywood. Yeah. Okay, piano sitting on top of the plywood. And that's what we drop from the crane. So we'll put the bicycle pumps yes. underneath the piano. So it'll be like a whole load of sort of fingers of bicycle pumps coming down underneath the, the whole sort of framework. So this framework becomes our landing gear, if you like. Yeah. This gives us a mounting point. Yeah. Okay. Todd gets on with the basic framework while I find out what we're up against. For any experiment to be scientifically rigorous, you've got to have a control. That piano is our control. It's just a piano with no landing gear, and I just thought it'd be good to see what happens 